Mr. Speaker, the evidence of the scale and the severity of the human rights violations being perpetrated in Xinjiang against the Uyghur Muslims is now far-reaching, and it paints a truly harrowing picture. Violations include the extrajudicial detention of over a million Uyghurs and other minorities in political re-education camps, extensive and invasive surveillance targeting minorities, systematic restrictions on Uyghur culture, education, and indeed the practice of Islam, and the widespread use of forced labor. The nature and conditions of detention violate basic standards of human rights and at their worst amount to torture and inhumane and degrading treatment, alongside widespread reports of the forced sterilization of Uyghur uh, women. Internment camps, arbitrary detention, political re-education, forced labour, torture and forced sterilisation, all on an industrial scale. It is truly horrific. Barbarism we had hoped lost to another era being practised today as we speak in one of the leading members of the international community. And today I can announce a range of new measures to send a clear message that these violations of human rights are un unacceptable and at the same time to safeguard UK businesses and public bodies from any involvement or links with them. I've been working closely with my right honourable friends, the Home Secretary, the Secretary of State for International Trade and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. And I mean, put simply, is that no company that profits from forced labour in Xinjiang can do business in the UK and no UK business is involved in their supply chains. Let me set out the four new steps we are now taking. First, today the SCDO and DIT have issued new, robust and detailed guidance to UK businesses on the specific risks faced by companies with links to Xinjiang and underlining the challenges of conducting effective due diligence there. A minister-led campaign of business engagement will reinforce the need for UK businesses to take concerted action to address that particular and specific risk. Second, Mr Speaker, we are strengthening the operation of the Modern Slavery Act. The Home Office will introduce fines for businesses that do not comply with their transparency obligations. And the Home Secretary will introduce the necessary legislation, setting out the level of those fines as soon as parliamentary time allows. Third, we announced last September that the transparency requirements that apply to UK businesses under the Modern Slavery Act will be extended to the public sector. So the SCDO will now work with the Cabinet Office to provide guidance and support to UK government bodies to exclude suppliers where there is sufficient evidence of human rights violations in any of their supply chain.